Hello and welcome. My name is Jody Lynn Craven, founder and creator of Abundance Consciousness, and this is my dear friend, Heather Marie. Hi, I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate. Welcome to Channel Squared, where we have extraordinary conversations about everyday life topics. And today is going to be extraordinary indeed. Today, we are going to talk about the freedom bringer. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Jody. <laughs> yeah. Jody, who is the freedom bringer? Mm, it's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, uh, that last week we were talking about titles and, uh, you know, what you're called from the other side and the other side, meaning, you know, guides, angels, uh, 5Z collective, you know, the other side, instead of names, they refer to titles. So this didn't happen at the very beginning. It was probably, I don't know, six or eight months ago. Um, I had, I was channeling with my team of, you know, ascended guides that I work with that just work with me on abundance consciousness. And they called me the freedom bringer. And uh, I thought that was quite weird. And I remember Heather, you and I channeled on it and you're like, you're right. They're calling you the freedom bringer. So that, that is my title from the other side. I think it's um, super amazing and totally accurate. I'm sure that it will come up as to why this is so accurate, even during our session today. But when you say the freedom bringer and abundance consciousness, it's, it's sort of, um, I could see where they maybe go together, but they seem sort of separate. Like, mm -hmm. how do they connect? Uh, that's a really good question. And there's a lot here that we could touch on. So I, uh, I, I, I'm going to start with this. When we think about the highest levels of abundance, we think of, you know, our life being divinely abundant. It resonates at the frequency of freedom, ultimate freedom. And when it comes to money, uh, the attachments that we have to and through money um, are somewhat the opposite. They keep us locked in, limited, um, instead of free. And that's how they connect. It's my mission in this lifetime to disconnect those cords, disconnect those attachments. So people can experience the ultimate freedom of abundance bliss, the divine. Amazing. <laughs> you know, when, when I, I think about abundance <clears throat> and how we are kind of brought up, you know, when I think about abundance and money, you know, sometimes I come back to, you know, how, what are my beliefs around money and abundance based on how I was raised, mm -hmm. how, you know, my family did it, how my, you know, friends and their families did it. And, you know, I built up a lot of beliefs about money, that money is hard to get, you have to work hard to get it, you know, that it's always a grind. And, you know, I think a lot about, um, and, and let me use money, because I feel like I know that abundance consciousness goes way beyond just, you know, money. But let's talk about money because it's something that's on everybody's minds. It's always on their minds. Maybe not everybody, but many people, it's, it's on their mind quite a bit. It almost sometimes feels like being enslaved to something. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you see it that way? Like, how do you see it? hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and I would agree with you that it's on everyone's mind. And I believe that it's either conscious or really unconscious. So you'll see it in, in the way that you feel you have to do something. I have to go to work. I have to do this job. Uh, you know, it's the root behind it is because I want money. Um, I have to, or I can't charge people for this because, you know, it's a, 
it's a spiritual thing and it's wrong to charge people. Um, so I have to work, you know, another job so that I can do this as a side project or do what I love as a side project because it doesn't earn money. Um, it's this unconscious frequency that lies in the background of people's minds. And I love the word that you used enslaves them because we get into this, this belief system that, you know, we got to work for the, you know, until we're 65, until we have enough money, and then we can actually live our lives. Well, that's a form of enslavement. Um, so to speak, it's a, it's an interesting term, but definitely, yeah, the way that we do money in this world, it was never meant to be this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was it meant to be? It was like, meant to, it like was just, just tell me everything about it, how it's it was supposed just, to be. <laughs> yeah, it was just meant to be an exchange. It got distorted and corrupted. Uh, there's, there's a lot of corruption when it comes to uh, money and the policies. Most people in the world don't understand how monetary policy works or fiscal policy or economics because it gets so complex um, how we create money and what backs our money. Like as it stands today, we don't have anything that backs our money except for the government's promise that it's worth something and our collective belief that it is. You know, and and a lot of people think, well, that's why we need to go back to the gold standard when it was um, when money was backed by something tangible. But the interesting thing, and this is my opinion, this is not financial advice. Okay, this is what I have channeled um, is that that's not really any better because the manipulation that has happened in the gold and silver market, like even diamonds, think about the physical, tangible things. There's so much corruption in there. I watched a documentary. This was probably last year, and it was talking about um, these these big cartels, drug cartels, you know, it, it swapping gold for drugs in third world countries and then bringing the gold back here. So it's very corrupted. It's, it's very manipulated. Um, it's very speculative, like that, which, which just means that, you know, it could go one way or, or another based on someone else's opinion. So I don't think the having a tangible asset behind it is, is really the way it was designed to be either. Um, what I have channeled is that it was meant to be an exchange, an exchange of love. So if we've all agreed that this paper and these coins in our pockets are valuable, Mm -hmm. what do you think it'll take for us to believe something differently about money? I think it's seeing that. Um, When we think of money, we don't think of that premise of it's our belief that says that it's valuable. It's the government telling us it's valuable, but there's nothing tangible behind this piece of paper, except for this belief system. We could, you know, back in the day, they used to have a stick. They called it a tally stick. Um, And it literally had markings on it to tell you how much money you had that at one point in history, they used this giant rock. I can't even remember what it was, but they would transport this rock on big ships. And it was the equivalent of X amount of money so that you could trade. And there was one story about how this ship, you know, hit a storm or something like that and sunk to the bottom of the ocean, but they still counted it because the rock, this giant rock was on this ship. And they were like, okay, well, you can still have the value of that. So when you begin to see how illusionary it is, how, you know, we have more control within the system than we think we do, um, just like everything else, I think that's when you're going to start to see the shift and we start to see the shift in people wanting something different with cryptocurrency. Um, Not to say that that is good or bad. It doesn't matter. It's just seeing the shift for people wanting something that is more tangible, something that is more representative of the energy that they're putting into uh, whatever product or service that they're selling and then getting back something that they feel will hold value. Hope that makes sense. Sure. So, I mean, what I'm getting is that, you know, currency 
could be simply a, an exchange, just any exchange. It doesn't even have to be physical dollars and cents. It could be, it doesn't even have to be physical things. It couldn't be like, you know, I'll trade you a chicken for a wagon wheel. That's taking mm-hmm. it back. <laughs> it, it doesn't even have to be that. It could be, you know, an exchange of, of energy. Like, you know, I will, you know, um, I don't know, come wash your car and you will help me prepare a meal and it's an exchange. Yeah. You know, that that's a currency too. Mm -hmm. You're talking about kind of like vibrational currency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. And I, I think what limits people right now in believing that that vibrational currency is possible, um, is the limitations of, of our own mind, of our own society. We've, we, you know, barter and trade didn't work because I have a cow and you only have a chicken. And I believe that our society was installed with this belief system of, I will get robbed or, you know, I need to make sure that it's fair and that I get what I deserve. And b- behind that is really a fear that you won't, um, which, you know, if you believe that to be true, then it's going to continue to be true. But you look at what happens in a crisis, you know, when somebody needs help, everybody comes together. My parents, um, this summer, they had a, a, a big fire And, uh, there was farmers from all around that came with heavy equipment to put out the fire in assistance with the the fire department. But if those big tractors and and big earth movers weren't there, like everything would have burnt down and they didn't expect, you know, oh, I'm going to get money because I put your fire out. They came because they felt compelled. Like it was their neighbors, their friends. And that is an exchange of love. Definitely. You know, Scott's asking a question. Doesn't there have to be trust for any currency to work? It's interesting. The word trust. We've had lots of conversations about trust. Mm Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a hard question. In theory, yeah, a hundred percent. But ask yourself this question: How much trust do you have in the financial system right now? How much trust do you have in the currency right now? The more that I learn, the more I see how much corruption there is. I mean, we've printed we've printed billions, trillions of dollars around the world over the last two years. How? How is the currency sustaining? So in theory, yeah, of course, trust is is something that's needed. But I think our world is proving today that we don't operate in a currency of trust. It's it's kind of like we're just doing what we're being told. Um, I think for an energetic currency to emerge, there would need to be trust. But I think that we would have to relearn what that is. We would have to break down all of these walls because I mean, how much do we trust anything in life right now, especially now after the last two years and, and everything that's going on. So I think we would really have to do a lot of internal work on who can we trust? What can we trust and learn to trust that guidance system within, um, because it won't steer you wrong. Right. So you, you said something that I want to come back to, and, and that is, currency sustaining itself mm-hmm. like how are we sustaining the currency like how is our government sustaining this currency <laughs> that's a that's a question on every financial you know or economic individual, anybody that deals with fiscal or monetary policy is asking this question. The debt load that our countries are holding right now is astronomical. Um, and, you know, we just, I'm in Canada and we just had a election and our, you know, the one guy that was running, um, there was more than one, but the, the JT, the pretty one, Um, he, he, somebody asked him about the debt load and, uh, he was like, it's not something that I think about, but is the leader 
he, he got reelected. The leader of this country says, I, it's not something that I think about. It's not something that I really think is important is, is what I heard. That's not a direct quote, but that's what it meant to me. Um, so I don't see a, a sustainable path forward. I, you know, looking back in history, I can't guarantee anything. Timelines can change. I can tell you what I've channeled. Um, what I see from a financial perspective is I don't see how it's going to work. And looking back at history, there hasn't been one fiat because that's what we have fiat currency backed by nothing uh, that has ever worked ever in the history of mankind. It has never worked. So there's going to be a change in currency very quickly. I think that's my prediction. So, okay. So let's, let's talk about abundance consciousness. You know, we've got all of the money woes. It's being printed out of thin air. It's really actually valueless. Yeah. So when we, when we talk about abundance consciousness, the very thing that you lead people into, like, what is abundance consciousness? Like, how do we, like, how do we tap in? Like, what does it mean? Okay. First, I want to close the bracket on what we were just talking about, because I can feel a lot of people's systems as we're talking about this. They're like, ah, money, money could go away. The currency could collapse, whatever was going through your mind. Um, it could. I have channeled that it will. I have channeled that we will not have money in our future. Uh, it will be an energetic uh, exchange of love. And that's really hard to wrap your mind around. But if you take one thing away or you try and you know grasp on one thing throughout this conversation is that everything is working out for the better. And every time I've channeled on what do you invest in until that point, when there's that breaking point, it's what you believe will be profitable for you. It's your belief that, that will determine how, how easily you go through this path that we're on right now, or how difficult it's going to be. And I understand that thinking about your life savings um, or everything that you've built up to this point being, you know, valueless or, or worthless. Um, but that being said, you determine the value. You're the one that's saying the currency currently today is valuable. You vote with your feet, <laughs> your wallet, whatever, right? You, you get the choice on how you create your reality and, um, oh man, I lost the thought, but hold on to the, to the fact that everything is working out for the better, that this is a part of the ascension process that, that releasing yourself from any, any sort of enslavement you know, whether it's by money or things, um, or status, um, is where we're going, the, the direction that we're going. So it's okay. It's going to be okay. And imagine a world where you had everything that you needed and you wanted. That's where we're headed. So hold on to that vision. And it sounds, um, it sounds really blissful. Like when you say that, I think, <laughs> you know, oh my gosh, how wonderful, you know, to, to be free from the worry, the anxiety, um, the wondering, you know, am I going to pass something on to my children? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be enough left? Are they going to know how to manage it? You know, you, you talk about like generational, you know, money, general family money. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I read somewhere uh, once that it's something along the lines of it only takes, I think, two or three generations for family money to be completely gobbled up if you're not managing it right. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, that's a little terrifying. You know, you have these families that have built massive um, financial empires and, you know, what if there's nothing left for their grandchildren or their great grandchildren? Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's, it's a great idea to think that, you know, something 
better is on the way. <laughs> Absolutely. And the earth, the earth and the, the beings of this planet were renewable. Like the, the resources we have on the planet, renewable. Mother earth is renewable. Um, there is so much abundance and that brings it right back to what is abundance consciousness. And it is seeing that abundance is more than just a number. Sure. Money can factor into that. Absolutely. But abundance is a higher scale of everything. It is the bliss of, of seeing the, the world that you live in and, and being with it in awe and how you can put a seed in the ground. And all of a sudden you have a cherry bush or I don't know, tomato bush or, or whatever it is with a little bit of water and sunshine, like how these miracles of life happen all around us and, and being a part of that abundance and seeing that you are always provided for always. And Scott asked the question, doesn't humanity's vibration have to raise far past what it is today for new currency to be created? Um, well, I think we're all on an ascension path. And I think Scott would agree with that. And some people are going to go and some people are going to stay the way that I have, I have channeled it. And the way that I see it is some of it's going to be out of necessity, necessity of people coming together to care for one another out of love, protect one another and create these micro communities essentially. And I think it will build from there. That's what I have channeled. So, um, you know, it's the coming together of people and the raising of the vibration as a collective, which we talk a lot about. Mm -hmm. So yes, so, things have to change, um, but change is coming. So, yes. So when, when we are talking about abundance consciousness and the philosophies of abundance consciousness, as you channel them, as you teach them, how is it different from law of attraction? Hmm. Okay. Amazing. So there are kind of two parts to this question on the abundance consciousness side. I wrote an entire book about how re when we raise our level of consciousness, the world that we see changes. So it's a nine phase spiral. And, uh, at the bottom is obviously unaware, um, but it all relates to money and it goes up from there. So you start with, you have no idea what's going on with your money, how you feel about it. The next phase would be safety where everything feels unsafe. The majority of our world is here or at the next one, which is tribe where we're kind of stuck in this box of what we see other people doing. Uh, you said it at the very beginning of this conversation is like, it's hard. It's gotta be a grind. It's going to take a lot of work. That's the box that we create. And then we are, you know, I guess tied to until we open up that box to see that a billion other possibilities exist outside of what we think is possible. And it takes some work to get there. Um, and then the spiral continues up and every layer or every level that we go up in consciousness, we see our world change all the way to the ninth level, which is oneness, seeing that we are all one. And um, so our world changes as we change the way that we see it. That's abundance consciousness. That's seeing your world differently. And the way that I teach it, that's different than just law of attraction. I found myself asking a lot of questions about law of attraction, you know, how, being the main one. Am I doing enough? And how? Um, and <laughs> when I see people working with, you know, they kind of use interchangeably like law of attraction and money mindset, right? They're kind of like looped into one. And, um, where I see people really falling down or needing assistance is in the understanding of how we get to this point. We think, oh, well, I need to deal with, you know, what my parents taught me about money and what my society is uh, teaching me about money. Yes. And that is the surface. So I created the fluid money blueprint out of necessity. I wanted, I was working 14 hours a day, you know, maybe even more than that. First one in the office, last to leave, hustle, hustle, hustle. You know, I was experiencing adrenal fatigue. All of my relationships were failing. You know, I just, I wasn't living my life anymore. I was living to work instead of, you know, living at all. 
And uh, so I, I went within and then I began to channel the keys. And that's what I call the fluid money blueprint, which is three parts. The first part is I teach you how to draw deeper down within yourself, within that subconscious to see how you keep creating the same reality over and over and over again. And most of the time it has nothing to do with money. It's how we perceive ourselves, um, whether you know we attach money to being good or being bad, being a good provider, being a good contributor or partner. You know, if I, I don't make as much money as my husband or, you know, he's taking care of me too long or vice versa. Um, you know, oh, I'm not a good partner. Um, you know, if I don't have, if I don't have X number of dollars in my bank account, then I'm not a good husband or, you know, whatever. We have all of these attachments to what money means about us that distorts our reality and how we live it. So I teach you how to draw down and figure out what those things are. That's phase one. So a huge conversation on that side of things. Then the second phase is how do we shift that? Because the way that we do things um, from a brain perspective, the path has already been mapped out. I call it the cow path because, you know, you see cows <laughs> in a field and they go in the same direction, all like tip to tail, even though there's like a thousand acres on one side and a thousand acres on the other, they only go through this one path. And, you know, in the middle of summer, when there's nothing obstructing them from like, you know, frolicking, like, fa -la -la -la, like all over the place. They still don't. <laughs> they pretty much stay to the same path. This is what we do. The way that we make money, the way that we perceive what money means about us, how difficult it is, how easy it is, um, where it can come from, even all of these things we've, we've solidified within our own brains. So I teach you my method on how we shift that. And it has a lot to do with the nervous system. We're so unconscious of our, our feelings around money. Like you pick up your wallet right now, or you log into your bank account right now. For me and a lot of my students, what they feel is this anxiety driven reaction of like, <gasps> you know, your throat starts to close off and your heart's beating and you're like, I'm not checking it today. Just, you know, F it. I'm going, I'm going to go to work. <laughs> and for me, it would be like a, a I got to drive harder because it was this fear driving me. And, you know, whatever frequency we're putting into the things we're doing is the frequency that we're calling towards us that, that we're infusing into everything that we're touching. So I was telling the universe every day, you know, I'm anxious and I'm afraid and give me more things to be afraid of. And it's exactly what was happening. So I teach you to calm that nervous system in phase two of the fluid money blueprint um, and shift it. So basically creating a wall in between you and that old pattern and choosing a new one and solidifying that new one. And then the last phase of that fluid money blueprint is really how do you become magnetic? How do you look at your entire day and create your day from the place, the frequency that you truly desire? Because it's not about when I do, I receive. It's when I am, when I be, I am receiving. So we say, oh, when, when I have a million dollars in the bank, whatever your number is, most people haven't quantified it. Um, which also keeps us enslaved because there's no end point. We just keep moving the goalpost over and over and over again, and we're never happy. But once I get to this fictional place in my mind, when I have enough, I will feel safe and I will feel joy and I will feel bliss. And the thing is that we actually push that away because in this moment, we're not, we don't feel safe. We don't feel joy. We don't feel bliss or our average is not there. So I teach you in phase three, how to build your day so that your average now becomes that joy, that bliss and you're super magnetic. And then the last part is opening to possibilities. You know, how can money enter your life? How can you be supported? We often only think one track. I make a call or I book an appointment and then somebody signs up for some product or service. That's the only way that I can get paid. Well, that's not the only way that money can come into your life. There's billions of ways. For example, we needed a tractor this summer. Boom, a random tractor showed up. <laughs> things happen to support you. And when you start taking yourself out of this cycle of like beating yourself up, like, uh, you know, I did it all wrong and I'm bad. When you start to step out of that and just look at it as data and start shifting so that you're consciously choosing what you desire rather than, you know, ending up in this place over and over again, unconsciously, when you start to consciously choose that, you can look back and see, I was always supported. 
I was always taken care of. It was this monkey mind, this perception that I had that I never was, that was really distorting the way that I saw my world. But in reality, I was always taken care of. And that's abundance consciousness. Wow. It's so organized. (laughs) (laughs) The thing that I think is really um, fantastic about you and what you offer and the gifts that you bring to the world is that everything that you've done in your life has led you to this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. You are not just somebody who has developed a program or written a book or, you know, whatever, right? You aren't just this. You are also have a financial brokerage. Mm -hmm. You are educated. Mm -hmm. You are not some woo channel that just channeled some things and is going to sell a thing, right? Like you actually truly understand money, finances, insurance, government, you know, trust agreements, all of the things, all of the structures, all of the things that are creating some of this monkey mind and, you know, cow path that is that people are following, Mm -hmm. you know? So when you, when you created this program, which by the way, if anybody cares to know, I believe that you offer this program for free, don't you? I have a webinar that teaches you all about the fluid money blueprint. It teaches you all about the three mistakes we make when it comes to attracting more money. Yeah, that's completely free. It's an hour long. I just tell you all the secrets and then I share a special opportunity at the end that you can hop in on. Yeah, Amazing. So the thing is, is that this information that you've brought forward has been brought forward through your gifts as a channel. Yeah. And you have the intellect to be able to take a very, you know, kind of obscure or abstract um, ideology and put it into easy to understand process to improve somebody's life. And I think that that speaks a lot to your character you know, that you are truly here to serve others, that you're here in a place of love. Again, going back to the the currency and the change in currency and it being a currency of love, Mm -hmm. you know, it was a lot of work putting the program together and yet you loved it and you can feel the love when you're in it. And when you're exploring your programs and your book and all of that, you can feel that this is coming from a universal place of love. And I think that that is something that um, that we really need to talk about because, you know, there's a lot of programs out there. You know, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, manifesting and law of attraction and creating and, you know, and, it, and it's almost this like, drowning noise. Mm -hmm. And it's because somebody is taking another intuitive's teachings, putting their understanding, their brain power, their spin on it, and then rolling it back out. But what you're offering is something that is brand new. This has never been created before. And the reason it's never been created before is because you're the freedom bringer. Yeah. You know, you're the one that came forward that raised their hand and said, I'll do it. (laughs) When creator says, who's going to bring these people freedom. And you raised your hand. I thank you for that, man. Like my life is different because of it. You know, (laughs) thank you. I mean, Man, I didn't know that this was my purpose. And it's really funny. I was telling this story the other day. Um, You know, I got into the financial industry um, because I had, you know, I bought a house in the peak of the market and then, you know, before 2008 and then 
when my ex and I were breaking up, um, it was at the bottom of the market. So my house that we paid like 310 for was worth 150. And I was one of those people. And I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was so afraid and I was so ashamed and that lit a fire within me to learn. And it was all by design. So I, I love that you, you said that, you know, everything has led me here truly wholeheartedly. Every step that I've ever taken has led me to right here where I sit with you and everything that I've developed. And I, I wanted to learn for me. That's how it started. And then I start, I got into the financial industry because I thought, what better way to learn than be in it, you know, like learn <laughs> from these people. So I took on a second job just so I could do this. And, you know, the opportunity, you know, some guy that I didn't know who is friends with a cousin of mine who I, you know, don't see all that often had a barbecue. My cousin had a barbecue. My brother was there. This guy was there. This guy talks to my brother and says, Hey, I'm a financial advisor. You should come out for a presentation. And my brother's like, yeah, cool, whatever. Right. They exchange phone numbers. My brother drug me along. And that's the company that I ended up working with. Um, that I have my, my brokerage through. So everything happened exactly the way that it was supposed to. I was completely led here. And when I started to, when I started to uh, lean in, I just went within, I was so tired of this rat race. I was so tired of feeling like there was never enough money. I would get paid some months, like $40,000. And I still didn't feel like there was enough money. I always felt like it ran out. I always felt this anxiety and I had studied, you know, I've been going to personal development courses since I was like 21 years old and I'm 36 now. So i I've done a lot. I've read a lot. I, you know, in the last five years, I've probably spent a hundred thousand dollars on coaching programs personally. Um, and I, I was looking for all of these answers in all of these places and I was done with it. So I just went within, I was like, God, give me the answers. Like what kind of questions should I be asking myself? Like, what am I not seeing? And then things started to drop in and slowly drop in and the abundance consciousness philosophy dropped in. And I, I started testing things like, Hey, does this make sense to you? Like these things that I was hearing and people would be like, yeah, that totally makes sense. I, yeah. Like you should tell me more about that. And, you know, I tried not to teach it because I had a you know wonderful business and financial services, and it's a very different world. It's very 3D in that world, budgets and insurance and investments. And you know, all of this is pretty woo. And yeah, I was not prepared to go that direction. And so I started building these programs and I started building these philosophies and I started doing it for myself. And I started to kind of teach it under the radar to check to see if it made any sense or if I was maybe kind of going crazy. And then I remember. <laughs> our very first channeling session, you had done like a big group channeling session. And that was kind of the first time that I really met you. And, uh, you know, as if by chance we met, um, and <laughs> as then if by chance, as if by chance, I was like, yes, I need a session with Heather. And I, I went in and I had like this page full of questions about the content that I, I had received, you know, the, the philosophy, the nine phases of the spiral and, and, you know, how, how people, you know, separate themselves, um, through money and how they push money away and like all of these things. Like if there was 20 questions on this page, 19 were about my philosophy and everything that I had received in terms of information. And, uh, the first thing I, so I asked my first question, I just want to check that, you know, uh, I think this was the, the collective at the time, and I just want to check that, you know, I'm hearing this correctly and that I'm on the right path. And they're like, yes, your channel is clear. You no longer need to ask questions about that. Next. I'm like what? <laughs> oh, okay. So all of this is like good. Like, okay. Yes. Okay. I have one question left. Like, I don't know. So I started asking questions about currency because I had started diving into, again, it was this, my dad had asked me the question, like, how does currency work? Like, why is it that United States always has a higher dollar than Canada? And, and I, they don't teach you that in the, you know, the courses that I took to be a financial advisor. There's very few people on the planet that actually understand currency, monetary policy, and fiscal policy. And I was one of them like two years ago, I had to barely an idea. 
Um, so I started researching and I was led through research to all these different places and, and all these different people that were really helping me figure out the nuts and bolts and, and package it in a way that other people could understand that I could explain this. So my next question was something about currency. And that's when the collective said, yes, you will bring in the new earth currency. And then they were cheeky. They said, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. they said, and you thought you were just building a program. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, okay, okay. I don't know what that looks like, but I had these visions of what the future would look like. And I would test them on other people and just ask people what they thought and, and keep channeling the information from there and delivering the information that I had, I had received. So it was, it was just a passion project I wanted to understand. I have a question about when you first received the words that you are going to bring in new earth currency. How did that feel to you? Because, you know, I tend to be the channel that delivers information like this. Yeah, I attract, you, you know, high high level leaders that have big purpose. Like these are, these are my people, right? So when you heard that, did it feel like a burden or did it feel, were you excited? Like, what did it feel like for you? No oh, burden, burden never came up. It's, it's never crossed my mind that it was, it was a burden to do this work. Um, I think I was just speechless, like jaw on the floor. Like, why'd you pick me? Um, and you know, it's really funny. Oh, even my dog's excited about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, what, what's really interesting is that the people that know me really, really well know that I am awful at math, like basic math. And I am awful so at true. spelling. Yeah, both of them, you know, and I, I think I've said it to you on the phone before, Heather, like how rude they'd give me like th there's a part of my brain and maybe it's just the channel where I can understand really, really intensely, you know, mathematical or, you know, economic or all of these things. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I can explain it to you, but you know, what's 25 times, I don't know, 13, no idea. Like, it's just, it's awful. Or like, how do you spell it? Like the most random things, like it's bad. Like, so I think what was going through my mind is like, I don't know if I'm smart enough to do this. <laughs> like, why would you choose me when I'm so bad at math? Like I know how to work a spreadsheet and it's so interesting and I'm humbled by it. Maybe that's the reason why they didn't give me the gift of basic math, like my husband or, or you or Jackie, you know, you guys are so good at it and I'm not, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, it, 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 maybe it, it goes to, to show those who know me really, really well, that there's this brilliance that, that is beyond me, that, that is clearly from God connected to God connected to, you know, something way bigger than me. If I can understand how currency is created, monetary policy, fiscal policy, policy, how our debt, national debt load works and, and how we got into this place, but I can't do basic math. Maybe, maybe that's why. And it'll give you instant credibility. Yeah, you know, yes. what's funny, Jody, I, is, is when I first started like channeling, trans channeling, I would listen to the recordings way back in the beginning. And there were things they wanted to say that I didn't have the vocabulary for. Yeah. And so they would say things like this channel doesn't have the vocabulary for this. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, so rude. <laughs> Come on. You could have given me a better vocabulary. I know. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Better yeah. math skills. Like, yeah, it's um, when I learned this is what I was going to do. I was speechless and honored. And uh, it made sense why I ended up here. Like all of the pieces, like, oh, I get it. They all fit. Like, why did this random person invite my brother to, you know, this financial presentation? Why did my brother call me to go along? And, 
you know, like every single piece of it, if I wouldn't have went through bankruptcy, well, consumer proposal and that foreclosure with my home, I probably never would have been looking for an opportunity to make more money, to get out of debt, to learn the industry. Like it all happened exactly the way that it was supposed to. And since I started channeling these keys and testing them and teaching other people, it's all flawlessly fell into plan. The, the information that has been delivered, not only about the program, because the program is just the beginning of, of my mission. The program is really to get humanity to see that they are good enough, that they are supported, that they are taken care of so that they could make that leap vibrationally to a new currency. That's just the beginning. That's where it starts. Amazing, 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 amazing. I think that you are extraordinary. I think that what you have brought to the world is just such a gift. And, um, you know, as somebody who has been through your programs and has worked with you privately um, as a private client, and I mean, I just, I do not have the vocabulary <laughs> for the gratitude that I have for you in my life. And I know that I can speak for everybody who's ever worked with you, that you are truly a gem. And, um, and we're very grateful that you are gracing this planet with your presence in this time. And that I am so thankful to be reunited with you again this lifetime. Yeah, I'm sure we've had multiple lifetimes. Oh, I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so but sure. The feelings are all mutual. Oh, yeah. So, Jody Lynn, how do people find your programs? How do they get a hold of this fluid money blueprint that's going to change their life? Like, give us your details. details. Where do we find you? Okay. Um, I'll drop a link that we'll put into the, the description so that you have access to the free stuff right away. You can always find me on Instagram, Jody Lynn Craven. It's just super simple <laughs> that <laughs> I have an entire website that you can check out or Instagram, or just go right directly to that, that webinar and take in all the information. I have tons of free content on Instagram as well. I just, I like to teach. Um, so it's all there. And I mean, I, if we have more time, you know, we're, we're almost done on time here, but if somebody has a question about what this transition is going to look like, or, you know, a specific, um, uh, belief system that they've been working on or whatever, any question for me in general, you know, put it in the comments right now, we'll definitely get it answered, but. Yeah, definitely. We'll give them, there's a little bit of a delay. So we'll give them a second to catch up to us. And, and then if you have a question, now's your chance because we do have a few minutes left. Um, so Jody, I guess I have so many more questions at this time just went way so fast. And I, I have questions. <laughs> we'll have to like such a big topic. It's not just how we see money and what we do with money. It's like, how is the system created? How has that been corrupted? Yes. Like we yes. go into so much. There's so much knowledge within my head, just not basic math. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. We, I get you covered there. Um, I mean, that's the thing, right? Is like, you know, there's, there's so much about the systems how they were built, how they were supposed to be to serve us and not how they're actually being utilized today. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, a lot about, um, you know, natural man versus corporation. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot we can talk about. I think if you're open to it at some point, and if you all want to hear this conversation, please, you know, drop us a comment that you do want us to do an episode on this. But, you know, I know that there are a lot of people asking a lot of questions about, you know, what it means to be a natural man versus a corporation and how that relates to currency, how it relates to freedom, you know, we are seeing really history being created right mm -hmm. now, the true um, division, separation and, and growth of humanity right before our very eyes. And I think that this is a huge topic that could really be 
polarizing yet useful. <laughs> yes. So definitely, if you guys want us to go over this topic, let us know in the comments. Um, let me check and see if we have any questions. Questions. Check I do big not topic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> A word a day calendar for Heather's Christmas present. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send me one that's a math, like math challenges. Like they oh, used to have in like third grade. No, I can't yeah. even do those. We'd have to start at like kindergarten math problems because I'm just <laughs> not, I just can't. It's going to be, brain- it's going to be like one of those calendar a day things where you like <laughs> rip it off and it's a math problem with the answer on the back. <laughs> that's right. <sighs> Oh, Uh, yes. So, so uh, Scott does have a question. He says, so capitalism has to die. hmm. It's a really great question. So the, what I hear from my guides, so I have a team of guides that, that support me and uh, they, they only support me as what I've been told is that they will only come together as a collective for me on this, this plane for this reason, the, the freedom bringer, my title abundance, consciousness, all of that stuff. So, um, the, the question that I would have, I would volley it right back and say, do we actually have free market capitalism? Um, and I would answer my own question by saying, no, everything is manipulated right now. If you don't understand what free market capitalism is, it's all that it is very, very simply is that that the market is able to move based on the the needs and desires like the the um the needs and desires of the actual market so we all need widgets so there's more widgets that are built and sent out and you know whatever prices reflect that that buy or that that demand um for said thing right now we don't have that um, when it comes to the amount of money that has been printed, a lot of times, you know, the, the big bailouts, instead of going to the actual corporations, they went to the stock market. So the stock market is inflated. The housing market is inflated. Um, we've seen suppression in different markets. Like, for example, when we're going through um, everything with coronavirus, wood went sky high last year and there was there was uh plants here in canada that were were holding they were hoarding wood to create this huge bump in prices um so that's happening all of the time so we don't really have free market capitalism if we did we wouldn't have inflation the way that we do in my opinion um but I think we're going to see what my guides tell me is that we're going to see a different form of capitalism um, because capitalism is being creative and bringing a service to uh, to take care of a need that somebody had. And and a lot of things are corrupted, like we've gone into corruption, but you think of the way that businesses are created today and mostly it's to to con- continue to serve need, but not not necessarily take care of that need, not to, to release it or whatever. Like you think of big pharma, right? They're not there to cure you. Um, they're there right. to make you comfortable, essentially, you know, it's very rare that you would, you would get cured. So I think that we're going to see this, this new version of capitalism where, where it's not the scarcity, it's not driven by scarcity because that's what big pharma is doing is driving scarcity or they're driven by scarcity in my opinion because why wouldn't they want to cure you well they don't want to cure you because then you're no longer a customer but they're not looking at the other side of things okay you're not a customer but now you're healthy now you're a part of the economy now you want to do this and that and whatever because you have life again you've been given a second chance at life imagine how you would do things differently imagine the impact that you would make and the things that you would purchase the things that you would do with your money that are so different now that you've had a cure um but it's this this, um, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? This, this narrow minded scarcity, um, programming that we have that has driven capitalism. So I think that'll completely change and it'll be more creative and bringing different solutions for different needs for the future. If that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that that's a great, uh, that's a great question and a great topic, you know, that, um, you know, what if, you know, what if this whole new capital, capitalism type of market 
is built on, on love. Yeah. Like why, why not? Why not? Well, it's and constantly renewable. Absolutely. And it's ne- <laughs> like, you know, we, we, we don't have a limit or a capacity on how much love we can, we can give to the world. We can give to ourselves, our neighbors, whatever. Now, you know, when I've talked about love currency with people, I get a lot of raised eyebrows and like, hmm, I don't know, sounds very woo, Heather. But the thing is, is that when you think about going to a, um, I don't know, like a, like a shelter, okay, and you are, you're serving meals, you know, to the homeless, you know, or you are doing these acts of service out of the goodness of your heart. You're providing this for another human being's benefit Mm -hmm. with no expectation of financial, like, gift in return, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing this because you want to do something kind for somebody else. This organization has the people that you need to help. So you're going to go there and you're going to serve meals for six hours, help clean up, do all of that. And when you're done, even though you got paid zero dollars, you walk out of there feeling amazing. Like you just won the lottery. It was the greatest day you ever had because you loved somebody else and they were grateful. Mm -hmm. Why can't that be everything? A hundred percent. That's actually the philosophy that I have in my financial brokerage business. You know, things that pay me are mortgages, investments, insurance, but it's not always the thing that people need. And I've sat down with countless amounts of people and just showed them how to get out of debt, which paid me zero dollars. And a lot of times they will ask, why are you doing this? And it's because I have this belief that, you know, you're going to be so grateful that I taught you the information and you're going to tell somebody and that person's going to come back to me and buy something else. Like I am always provided for. If Mm -hmm. I do the right thing, if I act with love, if, if everything is out of love or joy, um, I am always provided for, and it may not come from that person exchanging with me. Here's some money for your services. It might be someone that was referred from someone else to someone else to someone else. And they landed up at my door, you know, Mm -hmm. like crazier things have happened. Like the way that I met my husband, I was searching, searching and searching for a man, you know, and I had countless bad relationships. And I stopped searching and I just started to act in love with me. I started to love my life. I started to love the people that I was around, love this moment. And he literally, my husband literally walked into my office. He came in. I was like, Ooh, there's a cheese tray. That's what he said. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, we got, we got engaged like eight months later. So Mm -hmm. you were always provided for, you know, it's just, yeah. When you act in love, when, when you are loving the things that you're doing, the people that you're around, you're always provided for. You just have to see it. And believe it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, this was super extraordinary. And, um, I, I think that, uh, you're fantastic and Mm. uh, everybody should work with you. Oh, thank you. I'm all heart eyes all day long Uh, for Jenny Lynn. You (laughs) You know, I just really believe if we changed the way that we interacted with money, if we released this attachment to, I have to have money to be good or to do the things that I want in life or to have joy or whatever, if that was cut, if we cut all of those cords and we just started really living in this moment, enjoying this moment and seeing how bountiful our life is in this moment, the whole world would change. And that's what I'm going to do. Yep. Your (laughs) lips to God's ears. That's right. (laughs) You know, I I was just on a podcast earlier. I know we got to go, but um, the the podcaster asked me, you know, if there was one person that could, that could, uh, that could teach your content, whether dead or alive, who would you choose? And you know what I said? What? This might sound silly, but God. 
God is the only one who knows the mission he put in my heart, the, the frequency that he put into my heart and, and the reason why I'm here. So he's the only one, he or she is the only one that would do it justice. So I choose God. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, Jody, Lynn, how shall we wrap up? Let's see. What are we doing next week? What's our call next week? What are we talking Ooh. about? We're going to be talking about new earth. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're so going to be talking good. about new earth, the vibrational, you know, like how to vibrationally start moving over to that, what that even means. Oh my gosh. Um, we're actually going to have Quinn back to tell us all about it, which is really, really exciting. So that's what we Amazing. have on tap for next week. And yeah, like I said, I'll put all of the links or we'll put all of the links so that you can connect with me um, below. Um, reach out to me, ask me questions, whatever, keep following. You know, this is really the first like open, open, open conversation we've had about all of this in, in public. So if you guys want more, you want us to dig into, uh, you know, more of the, the corruption in terms of the financial side of things, uh, the slavery side, how we're bonded, uh, literally, um, literally. Yeah, let us know, <laughs> let us know. And we will, we'll pick an, that topic for another day, but thank you all for watching and thank you, Heather, for the kind words. I love you so much. I love you. Bye y'all. <laughs> Bye.